Today is Alazia, All Souls Day, a Catholic day of remembrance on the day after Allahaili, All Saints Day. I think it's a good opportunity to address the subject of death and dying. What is it actually like in Germany when a life comes to an end? If we go way back to the Germanic tribes, there were both fire burials and burials in the ground. Ideas about the afterlife and an immortal soul were also known back then. The idea of Valhalla is particularly well known for deceased warriors. Depending on their status, the graves were filled with elaborate grave goods for the journey to the afterlife. With Christianization, burials were generally restricted to the ground. Here too, the graves of wealthy people were lavishly decorated, but grave goods became rare. Burning was a punishment for her heretics. The faithful were buried in the consecrated ground of the cemeteries, Friedhöfe. Nobles and wealthy benefactors were also buried in the churches themselves or in a crypt beneath them. However, those who had committed suicide, been executed or died in a forbidden duel, were not buried in the cemetery but outside. Even after battle, attempts were made to give the fallen a burial, if possible, on consecrated ground, even if they were not buried individually but in mass graves. There were also cemeteries on the North Sea Islands for drowned people who had washed ashore. These cemeteries were called Drinkeldoden Karkov, Graveyard of the Drowned, and were located outside the normal island cemetery, as it was not known whether the people had been baptized. From the end of the Thirty Years' War, the churches were obliged by the state to bury the dead of other denominations in the cemeteries for the first time. However, this mainly referred to Christians. Traditionally, the dead were buried in a coffin. As the cemeteries in the cities offered limited space, the bodies were reburied after some time, and then the legs were moved to Ossuseries, Beinhäuser. According to the origin of the word Friedhof, cemetery, the Friedhof is the enclosed, eingefriedet courtyard, Hof, near the church. In the second half of the 19th century, the designation as a place of peace, Frieden, changed. Until around 1800, cemeteries were usually located in the middle of the town or village. They were then moved to the outskirts. In the event of special disasters, such as plague, special plague cemeteries were created to bury the numerous victims. During the First World War, military cemeteries were also established to bury the many fallen soldiers. From around the beginning of the 20th century, in addition to the religious cemeteries, typically Protestant, Catholic or Jewish cemeteries, there were also more and more municipal cemeteries. Today the majority of cemeteries are organized under public law. During the Enlightenment, cremation became more popular again in Germany, even though the Catholic Church did not officially accept them until 1963. Cremation was simply more practical, hygienic and cost-efficient. So what happens when someone dies? It doesn't matter whether the person or their relatives belong to a religion. The legal requirements must first be fulfilled. The first is the death certificate, Totenschein. A doctor must have confirmed the death. If this happens in a hospital or nursing home, the administration will take care of it. However, if it happens at home, the relatives must inform a doctor who will issue the death certificate. This can be done by the family doctor or the emergency medical service. 
if the circumstances of the death are not clear, the police may have to carry out precautionary investigations to rule out full play. Afterwards, appropriate contracts must be sought and other institutions notified. The Standesamt must be informed at the latest on the third working day after the death. A possible employer or insurance companies, as well as banks, must also be informed. A possible testament must be taken directly to local court, Amtsgericht. It is advisable to hire a funeral home as soon as possible. These experienced companies, which are usually also on call at night or at weekends, can help as they have experience and can take care of the administrative matters, such as applying for the death certificate or organizing the funeral service with little distance. Anyone can call themselves a Bestatter, funeral director. However, a Fachkraft für Bestattung and Funeral Specialist is an apprenticeship in Germany. The Bundesverband Deutscher Bestatter e.V., Federal Association of German Funeral Directors, ensures good training and provides an overview of more than 3,000 funeral directors in Germany. In Münnerstadt, Bavaria, there is Europe's only training cemetery. The burial may not take place within the first 48 hours after the death, but as a rule no later than 10 days later. In the case of cremation, which must take place after 10 days at the latest, the urn must then be buried within six months. In principle, there are four forms of burial in Germany. Firstly, the traditional burial in a coffin. Also, this is becoming increasingly rare. Then, there is cremation, at the end of which ashes are stored in an urn. This urn is placed in an urn grave, or sometimes in a Friedwald cemetery forest, or scattered at sea. As in the Middle Ages and modern times, burial grounds are leveled and reburied after a certain period of time, typically after 25 to 40 years. In some religions, this leads to problems, as the dead typically enjoy an internal rite of rest in Judaism and Islam. While there are also numerous old Jewish cemeteries in Germany, deceased Muslims are often transferred to Muslim countries. This also requires documents which a mortician can help with. However, some municipalities also allow a perpetual right of rest in municipal cemeteries. Cemeteries have regional regulations, the cemetery statutes, Friedhofsordnung, which state what is permitted and what is prohibited. For example, certain planting or grave monuments may be prescribed. There are also regional differences in cemetery fees, which depends on the size of the graves, among other things. This is how the cemeteries finance themselves. In addition, there may be regular costs for permanent grave maintenance if the graves are tended by a cemetery gardener. The average cost of a traditional burial is around 13,000 euro, with a headstone usually being the largest item. This is partly a reason for an urn burial or even a burial in a cemetery forest as neither headstone nor cemetery gardeners are necessary there. Due to the high number of urn burials, the average cost is currently around 7,000 euro. The costs of the funeral are borne by the hares, as stipulated in German civil code. Another form of burial is burial at sea, where the body or usually the ashes are buried on the high sea. There is also the option of an anonymous burial where the deceased is no longer remembered by name. In the past the coffin was mandatory for burial, but this is currently only the case in Rhineland Palatinate and Saxony. Elsewhere burial in a shroud, as is customary in Judaism and Islam, is permitted. When it comes to the funeral there is sometimes a laying out but this is rarely done with an open coffin. 
afterwards there is sometimes an opportunity to say goodbye at the open coffin. Depending on the type of funeral that follows, this typically takes place in the cemetery chapel, and then the body or urn is buried in the grave. After the funeral, German tradition often calls for a funeral feast, Leichenschmaus. The mourners then gather at home or in a restaurant. At the funeral feast there is traditionally crumble cake, Streuselkuchen, often also sandwiches and possibly soup. People sit together again, comfort each other and reminiscence or make plans. The color of mourning in Germany is black. While people don't typically change their clothes for a funeral, they at least wear dark clothes, perhaps a grey coat with dark jeans. Ties or bow ties are also typically black. As a rule, everyone who knew the deceased is invited to the funeral ceremony, unless the funeral service in the closest family setting is desired. It is often mentioned in newspaper advertisements when the funeral takes place. You will typically be invited to the funeral feast, often by phone or card, but sometimes also during the funeral service at the cemetery. Neighbors or acquaintances of the deceased who are unable to attend the funeral will at least send a letter of condolence to expire the sympathy. Sometimes a flower is thrown into the grave or associations or parties lay a wrath at the grave. Sometimes relatives ask that wraths be dispended within favor of donations to a good cause, for example if the deceased died of an illness for a charity that cares for such patients. There are two exceptions to the burial obligation. One is if the deceased agreed during the lifetime to donate the body to science. The other is when, as in currently the case in Annaberg Buchholz, the location of the body is largely known, but recovery would involve disproportionated costs, and no danger can be assumed if the body is not recovered. In the town a citizen had dug unauthorized access to an old mine shaft, climbed into it, was buried in the process. A rescue operation would probably cost 400,000 euro. If the health department does not raise any objections, the city would make an exception of the burial obligation. If the relatives who have to carry out the funeral cannot afford it because they are unemployed, for example, the costs can be covered in full or in part by the state. Even if no heirs or relatives can be found, the state will cover the cost of the funeral. If you don't want to leave the planning and execution of a funeral to your surviving relatives, you can take care of it during your lifetime. Funeral directors offer advice on this. From around 5,000 euro, depending on the federal state, you can get a funeral as a package price and can decide how you would like to be buried. There is also insurance to cover the costs. If you want to see a documentary about this, you can watch a current one from ARD, which deals with the current costs in detail. I wish everyone who has looked this far along life, or as an acquaintance said, I wish you a coffin made of 100 year old oak trees that will first be planted tomorrow. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.